What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers Fireplace as an Outdoor Living. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to pick out and how to shop for a wood burning insert. So we're gonna help you decide what's gonna be the best wood insert for your particular application. Stay tuned to the end of this video, find out what I tell you. All right, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you guys do that, hit that thumbs up button. Helps us out a ton. Uh, really helps us to be able to keep making videos like this. Also, don't forget if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come down to our showroom today, check out these products in person and uh, see them for yourself. So what is a wood burning insert, first of all? Um, a lot of customers will come in, we'll clear up a quick misconception and they'll say they're shopping for a wood burning insert. But what they're actually shopping for is a wood burning fireplace. Now, what do we mean by that? A wood burning fireplace would be something that you're gonna build into a zero clearance application for like a new construction or a remodel type project, um, something that's gonna be built in the wall. So that's what a fireplace is. What an insert is, is if you have an existing old drafty fireplace and you wanna be able to heat the space with it and get something more efficient, that's what a wood insert is. So a wood insert is gonna be literally inserting into the existing or old fireplace and we'll run a chimney liner um, down your chimney to connect it so it can vent properly. But the idea behind wood inserts is uh, one, you probably cover up your old ugly fireplace and two, they're of course gonna perform and heat really, really well. So how do you know what to pick? How do you know what's gonna be the right application for you? The first thing and most important thing we wanna start with is size. Um, what size do we have to work with? And by the way, when we talk about size, these really are only designed to fit into a masonry wood burning fireplace. We do have some customers that will try to put these in to an old zero clearance like metal firebox that already has venting in place. Although some manufacturers say you can prove it, it just gets messy. We don't recommend it. These are for true masonry fireplaces. So you gotta start with your size. What's physically gonna fit in my space? Because that's the easiest way to start eliminating product, right? If you have a really tiny firebox, you obviously aren't gonna be able to fit like a bigger insert, for example. And uh, vice versa, if you have a big open firebox, you probably wanna get something bigger that's gonna physically fill the space up. So we wanna measure our height, <laughs> our height, our width, and our depth. That's gonna help us determine what's gonna physically spit, fit in our space, and then we can start whittling away options from there. The second most important factor to consider is how much space do we want to heat? And I'm gonna talk about some of these specific models as we get into this in particular. But let's say you're on propane and you don't wanna heat with propane or your electric heat, and so wood is your best, most primary heat option. You wanna use it as the main heater, and you have 3,000 square feet. Well, typically you're gonna want something bigger. So for example, these top units here, these are all flush. This is the Vermont Castings Montpelier. Nice, flush, clean finish. Um, this is the Regency CI 2700. Again, nice, clean face finish. This is the Osborne Matrix unit. Uh, same thing. Am I being repetitive here? Nice, clean face finish. Flush. The problem with flush inserts sometimes is um, they're gonna be smaller fireboxes. This is, isn't the biggest one, but for example, this is the Napoleon, their new S20, I think it is. They have a new S25. But what do you see here? You see this projecting out into the room. So these deeper fireboxes, of course, are gonna allow for more cubic feet within the fireplace, which means we can fill it up with more wood, get longer burn times, and heat more space. So if you have a large heating space and this is gonna be your primary heat source, I do recommend something that isn't flush. If you're in the you know, above 2,500 square feet, I would say, you're gonna want something that's gonna stick out so you can get that nice, deep, big firebox, you know, three, three cubic feet or so, two and a half cubic feet, that type of space. So for example, like one of the best, biggest heating inserts that we have, we don't have it here on the floor because we just can't keep them in stock, is gonna be like the Iron Strike Mott Lake series. Like they're 300, that thing sticks out on the hearth. It gives you a monster firebox. So that would be something to consider. So if you want something really, really big, I would stay away from this flush face. 
But if you're heating 1,500, 2,000 square feet or so, these flush place inserts will do you just fine. Other thing to think about is efficiency. Now, everything that we sell is extremely efficient. So the new standards that came out in May 2020 required some really tight um, efficiency standards. So is some inserts more efficient than others? Yes, but I like to put that in perspective because it's probably more than you're ever gonna need. Like the least efficient qualified model, because we only sell EPA qualified models, um, is gonna be gonna give you way long overnight burns no matter what. So you're kind of splitting hairs um, with that a little bit, but let me just show you here what I'm kind of talking about. So this is like the Vermont Castings Montpelier. And you can see they're using like little reburn tubes in here with some fire retardant baffles. So you've seen in some of my other videos, what this does is this is allowing oxygen into the top of the firebox. So the, the particulates that are coming off the initial burn here are gonna reburn. So that's just gonna keep reburning and reburning and reburning and you create those long burn times and efficiencies. So that's one technology um, that they have out there. Then another one, like Regency, for example, this is more like a hybrid type unit. So this particular unit has those same reburns in here, if you can see them here. But then on top of that, they're also using a catalytic combustor. Now, if you wanna know the differences between the technologies, I'll include a link below, cause that's a whole nother long video. But this is using a combination of the two to give you really long burn times. If you're really digging performance and you're really into that kind of thing and data, that kind of stuff, um, you can do some more research on that. Um, for the average consumer, what I try to educate consumers on is it really doesn't matter. Um, they all perform so stinking well, you're not, you're not gonna have an issue either way. But if you're in that kind of thing, you can do a little more research on that. Um, and then they usually all have blowers in them too. So like this is the Osborne Matrix. Uh, again, you can see it has that same reburn technology. This is a non-catalytic. And then we have our air controls here, which all of these will have as well. So we can damper it down if we don't always want a rip and roar and fire. When we damper it down, that's what's gonna give us those nice long burn times as well, which is pretty cool. The last thing to talk about um, and it, I would say this is probably the least important factor with wood inserts is more of an issue with gas inserts, but cosmetics. So um, we do have some customers, like we just sold one of these, for example, to a customer. He has an old style, like rustic home. So style was kind of non-negotiable. It needed to be something that was gonna have that old cast iron feel, that old charm to it. And uh, so we went with this unit. So if you wanted something super traditional, cast iron look and feel, this is uh, our best seller for that. Gonna be the Vermont Castings. You can get it in the Majelica Brown finish or like a standard cast iron. And then our other models are gonna be like steel inserts. Usually a little more contemporary, a little more, uh, have a little more fit and finish to them. Um, same with this matrix. Just nice, simple, clean lines. They're great. They're obviously can be whole home heaters unless you're getting into really big sizes. But typically, you know, it's a nice cosmetic feel. It's definitely gonna heat the space, but it's not a deal breaker if it can't heat the whole house. So um, yeah, that's really it. So we, we wanna, again, just to, in, to summarize this, you wanna start with what is the physical size you have, the physically, what you're physically capable of fitting the insert inside of. That's gonna eliminate half the products right away. So that'll help you. Then we need to think about how much space do you need to heat? And is primary heat source a main criteria for you? As you do that, then you start to whittle away a few more options. And then to really narrow it down, after you know what's physically gonna fit, after you know how much square footage you wanna heat, then you can chip away a couple of other models based on what you like aesthetically. So that should only leave you with two or three options. So do you see how you start chipping away at things It can make the decision process really easy? and help you at home. So hopefully this video helps you. Um, we're gonna include some photo overlays in this video as well. So we can kind of help educate you. And again, this is the Vermont Castings Montpelier. We have the Regency CI 2700, the Osborne Matrix, and then the new Napoleon S20 series as well. 
So th those are like our four best sellers that we have. Um, slim pickings right now, but this is what we got uh, on the floor. If you have any questions, call or text our staff at 303-800-5659. Again, as always, you can always check out these products on our website. Make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.